Hello and welcome to episode 106 of the Boot Nerds podcast. J. Mike, how are things? Things are pretty good over here in uh, Denmark, my friend. Weather has, um, it's almost like we have Canada weather over here. Um, shooting video is pretty damn impossible right now. So we go out and uh, it's nice and sunny. We think, okay, I wear my shorts and, you know, don't, don't bring a big jacket. And we start shooting and this hailstorm comes in from out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, crap. Uh, so we go back. Um, back in cover, like sit in the dugout and try and cover up the camera and all that stuff. And I'm freezing my socks off, right? Sun comes back out, like complete, uh, no clouds. Perfect. 20 more minutes. There's another hailstorm coming. Absolutely impossible. (laughs) Hate it. Come on, Denmark. So, uh, so yeah. Um, how's life in Canada? (laughs) You know what? We've kind of had the same... We haven't had any hail, but we had like two weeks of really nice weather, broke out uh-huh. the shorts, and then the last week or so, it got cold again. I'm still and wearing still shorts. shorts. I'm yep. still wearing them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going back. I already put away all my pants, so it's, oh, it's too uh, late yeah, for that but now, but I don't know. It, it's been good. We, I think I, I was just telling you, we went back into lockdown again, yeah, so oh, yeah. it's, a, it's not the greatest news, but it's also not the end of the world. I'm, I'm doing good. Can't complain too much. But, but apart from weather, we always talk about the weather. Uh, apart from weather, I'm also like, uh, you know, I'm feeling it uh, football-wise. Things are going well for Manchester United. Finally, you know, we came back against Spurs, looking good for the Europa League. It's it's like things are, things are going pretty well, I would say. So uh, I am um, being carefully optimistic for uh, for the rest of the season. And that's um, that's a new feeling for me for the last couple of years. Yeah, a Man United fan. it's been a while been for them, bleak. right? Yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, I'm actually pretty happy. And it looks like that the team, you know, despite playing some pretty horrible football at times, they get the results and that's what matters, right? So um, that's what matters. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you uh, did you see the Champions League uh, match the other day? Um, PSG, Bayern Munich? I did not. Uh, I've you, been you so swamped with just... A million things behind the scenes. You know a little bit about it. I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast, but it's been a very right. busy two weeks for me. Okay, okay. Um, but but the thing is, I was just it was a, it was a nice football match. Uh, the complete opposite of the uh, of the first match between the two. You know, PSG could have scored a lot of goals. Bayern scored the only goal, and there was just this referee, Italian referee, that. Every Italian manager and player hates, it seems. And he was so rubbish. You know, one point, Kayla Navas goes uh, goes up and pushes Paredes in the back. Um, and, and Paredes, Navas, they fall over. And Thomas Müller, who's like a meter away from them, uh, gets called for the foul in, in the box. It was like terrible refereeing. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, I, just, I just thought that was funny. But anyways, Josh, episode 106. We haven't come to dance, as they say. Uh, we have come to talk about uh, new drops from Nike and from Adidas. So uh, I don't know where you want to start. It's a little bit of like, uh, you know, CR7 signature boots, Silver Safari, uh, lots of stuff going on. And then, of course, we have the Adidas X-Men boots. Uh, I only have the Preds with me today because I, I, I borrowed out my X's to um, lend out my X's to our photographer. And it doesn't really matter because the X's are like, they're, they're wild. Um, so, <laughs> but let's talk CR7 first. What do you think? Silver uh, Safari. You've, you've, you've seen the image. You haven't seen the boots in hand yet, right? No. And it's one of those colorways I really feel like I need to see it in person. Because my initial yeah. impression in pictures is like they look a little bit cheap. They look plasticky in, pers- in pictures. And that's the thing. They actually also look like a little bit plasticky in uh, in person. They don't look as, I would say, nice and, and intricately detailed as the other Nike boots, uh, the, the, the other new generation Mercurial boots so far. I mean, it definitely looks better in person. You can see, you know, that... that yellow line around the speed band actually has yellow safari print on it. It's, it's quite cool. This, the speed wings actually has this like almost embossed uh, safari uh, footprint on it, which is uh, which is pretty cool. But there's just something about that. It just needs that little bit of wow factor for me. You know, white and, and this matte gray, just and yellow. And it could, have, could have been a little bit more. I say in the, in the Unisport video that it could have used like a chrome tooling, like we've seen on Nike ID, you can actually do. 
Uh, so I don't know. It's it's inspired by silverware. So why not take you know actually silverware inspired tooling and and, and do that? It just looks a little bit cheap. Yeah, I'm just I don't know. I'm I'm underwhelmed by it, especially given that Safari print. I think Safari print is is such a cool thing, and it, I mean they kind of did the whole subtle Safari print with on the Superfly Sev Six. Superfly that was six. six level up, right? The level up, and I yeah. really like those. I think that was subtle Safari print done right. This time around, it almost looks like the Safari print has faded a little bit, and I'm not yeah. sure that the Volt Yellow or whatever version of yellow they've gone for was the right accent color. I, I think they should have gone for something like orange and kind of yeah, called back orange, to the right? original yeah. Safari print boots. Would have looked a lot cooler. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Uh, and, and, you know, it's not a bad looking boot, but it just isn't up there for me with some of the other uh, Safari executions we've seen. Uh, and obviously they couldn't do another version of what we saw last year on the Vapor 13s. But it just doesn't feel, you know, if there's Safari on it. And yes, it's reflective. And yes, in the right light, it looks super cool. Uh, and it's a nice reference to the OGs that, that had these reflective chevrons and all that stuff. But it just, like, you, you really need the right light. And it's like, uh, are you going to see it on the pitch? Not really. So for me, the Safari doesn't, it doesn't stand out enough for it to really um, be, be, make it a powerful Safari boot, this one. Yeah. And I, I don't know that I like the contrast kind of shadow swoosh in the dark gray. I, I don't why, think why it why looks- not it, Why not make, make it chrome silver, man? Yeah, it just, it doesn't look right for whatever reason. It looks like there's just a swoosh and another swoosh and they don't line up properly and it looks cheap. I don't know. I haven't thought that about the other colorways. But but that's the thing. I mean, they've generally done a good job uh, so far. I think all the colorways released up until now have been pretty good, actually. Uh, MDSs were also kind of nice. And I think this is the first one where I haven't been completely sold on the the design from from the get-go. So, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm not a huge fan. They're probably gonna sell like hot bread in the morning because it's a far and it's it's CR7. But I just you know could have probably hoped for a little bit more and maybe using that um, that new uh, design a little bit. You know the the whole componentized design. Maybe use that a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think it should have had a special kind of like MDS. It should have had its own swooshes specific to that design rather than trying to incorporate too much of the regular design into the colorway. But overall, they're not terrible. And I think it's a it's one of those colorways that Cristiano Ronaldo himself will probably end up wearing a decent amount of time. Oh, yes. Just, Just because white. He, loves yeah, white he loves the white boots, right? So it, it's cool. And I like that they're going to be subtle from a distance as well. But mm-hmm. would you pick those over the MZS, Jay? No, no, I don't think I would. I think the MDS is a cooler, to be Me honest. Me too, I agree. I think the MDS, you might not love everything about it, but I think they have, there's something unique about them. And these are just a little bit less unique in my opinion. And, and sure, again, maybe with the flood light, floodlights and all that stuff. And I know, you know, my studio light is pretty, it's pretty powerful, but maybe with the floodlights, you know, they're going to have a slightly more reflective effect on the pitch in a stadium, but uh, you know, right now just from afar, it just looks a little bit like dirty white. Yeah. So, you know, Safari print is always beautiful, but yeah, I mean, for me, this would be like a a six and a half out of 10 drop. It's- I think I'm with you on that. Six and a half out of 10 is a fair rating. Right. Um, That was Monday. And then we uh, we got to Tuesday where Adidas uh, were like, okay, we see you dropping a Safari CR7 boot. Uh, we're going to we're gonna take over, be the talk of the week. Uh, so they dropped the X-Men pack with <laughs> uh, this uh, Predator Wolverine and uh, the X-Cyclops. And as many people have pointed out in the, in the comments of the Unisport video, why didn't they do... Um, uh, <laughs> It's. I mean, it, it would have made so much more sense. Um, and now I forget the name. What was he called? Uh, the 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 uh, Quicksilver, X Quicksilver, of course. Oh. Um, um, isn't that what he's called? Yeah, Quicksilver. See, that's the thing. I look it up and I remember the name, and now I need to say it, and I forget it all the time. Because Quicksilver is speed, right? Uh, Cyclops is like optical beams. Where did? So yeah. Um. But apart from that, Preds. 
I have to say that when I saw this for the first time, I had these boots for like uh, quite a few months. And when I saw these for the first time, I was like, yeah, that's not, not what, what have they done? But then I started looking at him and, and, and you know, this whole split design is, you know, 50, 50 blocky design with, with the yellow uh, almost front part going up to the, the, the front part of the tongue. I think it's actually really, really powerful. And all the little things, it only dawned on me yesterday that that the uh, the, the chrome added the stripes, they actually look like uh, the Wolverine claws. Three claws, <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just pretty wicked. Um, I think it's a nice looking boot. I'm personally not a fan of the, like, the relatively big Marvel logo and the, the X on the back, but take those away and this would actually be something I would really consider wearing. And, and maybe think of this, in, in like a, an OG Predator colorway, this blocky design, black, red, white stripes. Huh? I I really like these. I, and I, I'm not even as, I know a lot of people don't care for the Cyclops one, including yourself. I thought oh, they yeah. were all right. I, I didn't what? I didn't hate them as much. But the, <laughs> the yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't mind the look of them. But the what? Preds, I think are really cool. I think it's a great, boot to represent Wolverine with, oh, with the agree. claw, it, just with it, the spikes it, in general. It's super aggressive. I love the kind of black to yellow blocking that they've done. It looks uh -huh. really nice. I agree. I, I, I don't like the X-Men logo on the side. I'll be honest. I think it's right, a little bit right. too much, but in general, like to, to represent such an aggressive superhero, I, I think the boot's really cool. And I also thought, because obviously Addy really wants to capitalize on the football boot superhero market. They, sure. they did the Spider-Man Nemesis not too long ago. Maybe it two, was a while. Two years ago. Maybe yeah. it was two years ago. Why does yeah, everything feel it like it was just yesterday? But um, Maybe it was last year. Maybe it was I, last year. I, I think that the Pred Freak would make a cool Spider-Man boot as well. Just because I always think of from the Tobey Maguire version of Spider-Man when he first gets his powers and he looks at his hands and the little yeah, spikes yeah. come out of his fingertips. Right, That's right. kind of like almost exactly visually what's happening with the Predator Freak. What, what about making this a Venom boot? That'd be sick too. Or Venom or Carnage. Yeah, like you could do, I think the Predator as a base design for a superhero boot or a villain boot in this case, mm. uh, you could do a lot with it. But, but the Venom thing with the whole symbiote and all that stuff, that would be like really, really sick. Just black and red and, you know, having maybe uh, the stripes could be the white teeth or like that would make a lot. Of, you know, Addy, here you go. It's not a free idea, but you have an idea for, for next year on the next generation of the Predator. And we will, of course, take the, the mandatory 10%. Mm -hmm. Ven Venom Predator. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. And it would be a nice dig at Nike as well. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, up uh, Cyclops, do you like it? Like really? I, really? I don't hate it. I'm going to give him a seven out of 10. I got to see him in person, I, but I don't hate them. What, what is it that doesn't make you hate them? I, I just think it's cool. It, I, I like the way that it's the, the color blocking of it. I like kind of giving that boot a little bit more shape. It highlights the little, the layers that you don't really see in the normal colorways. Mm. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't mind what they went for. And I think the inspiration, if you're familiar with Cyclops, it's, it's visually representative. I would, I, w I would agree in saying that, you know, the tooling and the whole, you know, in the middle, having that red glint in the middle of the tooling, that's actually pretty cool. And I mean, they, they went for it and they went all the way. Um, I personally like the look of the ex Ghost because it's so clean. Like whatever they do is just so clean, it's so streamlined. It's so like almost like aerodynamic and sexy. And with that blocking and, you know, blue and yellow, it just always looks a little bit, I always think about Ikea. And, mm -hmm. and you know that that, that I, those <laughs> IKEA of like carrying bags, and it just—it's not a premium look for me, and, and I think that's just a bit of a shame. Uh, Quicksilver could have been extremely cool, but you know, yeah, it's bold, and you gotta hand it to them. Uh, but personally, I'm not a fan. So four out of ten. Sorry. You know what? They kind of also remind me a little bit of F fifty point nines. Eight. Yeah. You know which one I'm talking about? Which one uh, is it? Yeah, that's the that's the nine, I guess. With that with that line going. Do I have it? I do have it. Don't it, I? Kinda, is that the yeah. eight? I think I have the eight. Yeah, I have the eight. That's, that's the what eight. it kind of reminds the, me of. 
It also for anybody well, that's- well, it might be, let me, let me just go and get it. I'll, I'll you know, you, you, you keep talking. Okay. For, for anybody that's watching, I'm, I'm not even sure if this is a Canadian show, but there was a children's cartoon. It's probably still around. It was called Caillou. The colors on this boot really remind me of Caillou for whatever reason. And I just, I don't know. It's kind of funny to me. Yeah, it's the eight. It is the eight. Okay. Uh, kind of reminds me of that. Thing, but I was right, also yeah. thinking of the one after that one. Oh, that's the nine, yeah. That's the nine. But yeah, it kind of <laughs> reminds me of that, the way they did sushi. Also, Jay, are you familiar with the cartoon called Caillou? Caillou? No, you're not. Doesn't sound like you are. What, what's that cartoon? How do you spell it? It's like that? a children's cartoon. If you just search Caillou, C A I L L O U, the C main character. A I L O oh, Caillou. Oh, so it's a French, French sounding. Oh, it is maybe. <laughs> it's the, the, the little kid who's like the main character of the show. It really, the color palette really reminds me of this boot. That's a very, that's very French Canadian thing, isn't it? It must be. I'm not sure. Caillou. Uh, I did not expect that that spelling. <laughs> I, was, I was like K A J U. Yeah, that is a very French spelling uh, for yeah. sure. Okay. Um, but I don't right. hate this colorway. I'm still sticking by that. I think it's a seven out of ten. Wow. Okay. Preds. <sighs> I really think that they did a good job. I, I think it's it's a nine out of ten. I think it's as given the Wolverine concept. Mm -hmm. I think it's about as Wolverine-y you can make a football boot look. Yeah. I'm I'm also going to go nine. And if they, you know, removed the X-Men logo or made it smaller or better integrated, less in your face, I would actually have said nine and a half. It's it's such a well-executed boot. Love it or not, I think it's just, it, 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 it follows the concept so strictly that it's just like... Oh, a little bit of like a, 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 a best in class um, thing for people to look at if they want to do these type of superhero collaborations. Very, very, very good, to be honest. Yeah. Also, is there an X-Men movie coming out or something? I don't think so. Oh, because when the Spider-Man Nemesis came out, that was basically right at the time the movie was coming out, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It was tied to that. Must have been, yeah. Haven't seen I it, but I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember if the Spider Man boots were last year or, or 2019. It's like all of, you know, I'm thinking so far ahead in terms of boot calendars that I just, you know, we can't remember pack names. We can't remember when the boots came out. It's like, what kind of boot nerds are we? Like, we should <laughs> change the, 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 the name of the channel to the boot amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too many things to remember these days. I know, I know. Um, anyways, any more comments on um, on the Marvel X Men Adidas boots? No. Okay, here's a question though: Which okay. superhero needs a football boot and or villain next? I want to see Magneto. Magneto. That's an interesting. That would be one. cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like for that, sure. or or you know, I was thinking like Captain America. Um, Captain America would make with, a cool football boot because you could do something really cool with like the, the 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 red and white stripes and the flag, and you know, there's a blue hint, some some stars on it, and you know, uh, the, the obviously have the shield in that. I think it could work pretty well. Um, Iron Man would also be like a very iconic colorway, I think, to work with. Um, yeah. What I'd love to think? see, like, if you took the Cyclops color blocking on this uh -huh. X and made that into Iron Man colors, I think that, that would be, be pretty really fast. cool. But well, I'm so partial. I'm just, I'm a big Batman guy. And uh, I know we technically had the Batman Superman Under Armors way back. I don't even know how many years ago now. Good were they? No, it was kind of a cop lights. out. Just like, let's print the comic book pattern yeah, yeah, and the yeah, logo yeah. a bunch of times. But I think a proper Batman boot, something really technical. Again, I think an X ghosted could make a pretty good base for that. Uh-huh. Would be cool to see. Right. Although that's not Marvel. That's the other, that's yeah, DC. That's, yeah, that's the other guys. You're right. I would like, I mean, you know, Batman, Superman, I just think, you know, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Batman would be really cool. Uh, look, we've just, not had just, this discussion at all. Certainly not on the podcast, but Superman as a superhero, this is just completely off topic. And maybe I'm going to sound really dumb because I'm not super into this, but I think Superman as a concept is lame. He's just, he can do everything. He shouldn't lose to anybody. I just, it's, 
Like the whole concept of Batman versus Superman. I understand Batman, very smart, has all these gadgets, <laughs> right. all this stuff. But there's no way should he have should no have chance. a chance. Yeah. Should have no chance. Yeah. And especially if you go by the, like the, uh, I know, I know the whole Batman versus Superman and, you know, um, um, the Justice League and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's like a new universe compared to the, um, to like, the Batman films f- for me, right? Um, mm-hmm. but, but to me, those will always be the real Batman films. And I will always compare everything to those. And you know, that Batman would have no chance against any any universe Superman. Uh, mm. there's, there's, there's just no chance. I mean, he got his ass kicked by Bane. <laughs> I think that's a... So, yeah. you know, I, I agree. Uh, and I've, I've, I've just never been big on Superman. What I would really like to see, and it's, it's got nothing to do with Marvel or DC whatsoever. I would want to see a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> one day. I mean, uh, go full on. Uh, that would be really cool. Or like the first generation, because I grew up with them, the first generation Power Rangers. How awesome would that be? Power Rangers. I never got into it. That was not oh, when I was- that was big in Denmark, man. Power oh, really? Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just before that. And after that, we had like biker mice from Mars. I don't oh, know really? if it's, it's ever been a thing in the US, but it was a, it was a big thing in, in Denmark. I've never heard that. When I was a kid, I was big on, there was a specific Spider-Man cartoon that I watched. Okay. I was really big on Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yeah. Which is, yeah. I loved him. And then I also was big on Transformers. There was a Transformers cartoon and then there was like an animals version of Transformers. The show was called Beast Wars, I think. I loved that. I had like by a couple by, by different, way, I, would, I had a couple, we're dating ourselves, but I had a couple of VHS tapes of like the first season that right. I probably rewatched like a hundred times wow. when I was a kid. Wow, okay. Yeah, those, those were good memories. Um, and going completely off topic here, did you see that, that, that they made like an Optimus Prime, like an OG Optimus Prime uh, robot toy? that would actually, you know, uh, transform by itself automatically, going from really? Optimus Prime fighting mode to the truck mode. And you, oh, could, uh, you cool. could like voice control it and through the app and make fight. It was pretty cool. But it was also, I think, $800, so. Oh, so, yeah. that's all. But that's a lot of like, <laughs> <laughs> derailing oh. the talk. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay. We have a lot also, of questions. Also, I think Joker boots would be pretty cool. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Proper I've Joker been, boots. I've never been a fan of Joker. If we can make it the he's Ledger Joker, cool. But, but that's, that's gotta be it. But they kind of made, you could just take the greasy boots and just make them creepy. And that will be, you know, the Puma ones with the smiley That's on. true, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, questions. So if you have any questions you'd like us to answer in the next episode, leave them in the comment section right down below. And we promise not to talk too much about superheroes uh, next time. I don't, <laughs> we'll not make that promise. We can't, we can't make any. No, we uh, Siemenberg Isaksen, what are the cons of wearing FG boots on artificial grass? Because the FG plate looks so much better than the AG plate. Josh, care to explain two girls over drinks and go. Um, I don't think the looks, I think people factor looks into football boots way, way more than too they much, should. Yeah. Way, then I get it. You want something that looks good. And look at the topic of this episode is us talking about the look of three different football boots. With that said, you need to get boots that fit you properly. You need to get boots that are comfortable for you. And you need to get football boots. If you are playing on artificial grass almost exclusively, you should get some that are suited for the playing surface. Yes. And I I don't know what it is about football boots because I feel like nobody does this with any other sport, but people just insist on wearing the wrong thing on, on a surface it's not intended for. And... Like I get the availability like see, thing is an issue. People, yeah, you even see people going with SG boots on on like AG pitches. Just wh- wh- why would you do that? Like I get it, you're okay, you're a rebel. All that. Well, why would you do it? Anyways, the cons: uh, you screw up your boots, you lose your warranty, um, and the biggest one is that you can potentially end your entire football career because you can get injured like very, very badly because FG boots they stick more in the ground. So when you, when you plant your foot, your foot stops, your knee keeps going. And if you can imagine that foot stops, knee keeps going, that means that you're going to tear something in your knee or in other joints. And that's not very nice. And you know, knee, knee injuries are the worst and they can really screw you up. So, uh, and there's just less grip. It's, it's more, it's more rounded, the AG plates and they're less aggressive. So uh, I've seen some really, really nasty injuries for people who 
like yourself, Simon, insisted on wearing FG boots because they look cooler or they didn't want to spend the, the extra like 200 euros. And I get it. You can't always do that. But then if you play on AG, buy AG boots as your primary pair. You can always use them uh, on FG as well if you need to. Yeah. It's, uh, look, it's it's increasing your chance of injury is basically the, the main yeah. reason why it's not a great idea. A chance is more like a risk. It's not like a, a, a you know, you, you yeah. win a prize. By, uh, yeah, <laughs> like look, every that. time, every time you leave your house, you could potentially yeah. hurt yourself. That's, yes. that's just how things go. Oh, but yeah, like, like- I, I think the best example that you can give to explain why too much grip is dangerous is I think we've all done a sprint and at the end of a sprint, do you just stop abruptly in one step once you've reached top speed or do you no. slowly kind of gradually slow down? You gradually slow down. What happens on AG sometimes is you plant your foot to push off, your you body's stop. moving one way, you're shoulder to shoulder with somebody, they bump you in that same direction while you're trying to push in the opposite direction. Sometimes slipping saves you from getting injured, mm. but if your foot is stuck into the ground, all that force goes into your knee or your ankle or your hip. You could break your leg. Yep. You could tear your ACL or whatever. It's just, it's, it's a situation that I would rather not put myself in at this Honestly, point in time. Honestly, I'm going to put it like this from a, from a like football player perspective. I would rather break my leg than, than tear my ACL. I saw yeah. Jolter, he tore his, he tore his whatever, you know, tore his meniscus and his ACL and the other thing that I don't remember the, the, the name of in English. And it's just like, he's never been the same. He's never recovered fully. And I don't think he's ever gonna. I would rather just have a clean leg break and get over with and get it over with. But, but Seaman, you know, cons of durability, uh, sorry, warranty, durability, and, and you know, you can screw up your body. So buy AG boots, except that they don't look as good, honestly. Tony Grandes Cruz, did you realize that if you switch the N and the J in Jesus Javas, it would make Jesus Navas, which is the name of Sevilla's captain? <laughs> did, did you, did you? Did, has he's decoded ever, it. <laughs> he, he, he's on to us, man. He's figured it out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sorry, Tony. Um, Paul Kim, weird question that I feel like the answer is, what? It's in my head. When playing with regular boots, I seem to play worse than with turf boots. And by worse, I mean the just general possession and comfort on the ball. Keep in mind, I started playing soccer late in life, so didn't grow up wearing soccer boots. Um, the first pair he wore was F50 in 2014, thoughts. I, I, I think I can't speak specifically on, on feeling better in, in a pair of turf boots, but I can definitely relate to the question that I just feel more at home if I'm wearing, let's say, um, thin thin boots that fit my relatively slim foot well. It's, it's just a matter of like um, feeling at home, feeling um, familiar. It's a matter of familiarity. That's why you see some pros sticking like Tony Kors. Why is he still wearing his, uh, his 11 Pro 2s? That's because of familiarity. He knows the boots, he knows the feeling. Every time he gets the ball, it's the same sensation. And, and I just like that same feeling. Can you explain it? I don't really think so, but it's a matter of of getting good experiences in whatever type of footwear. And then you want to replicate that same sensation, which brings you confidence. I think it's a very mental thing. Yeah, I look, I, everything's about comfort when it comes to football boots. And I think in the case of a turf boot, especially if you're wearing them on natural grass or even on an AG pitch, you're not going to have the bite and the traction that, that a boot with studs would have. But I, I've played with guys that, they really never get past the jog, but they're really good players, right? So it depends on, on even just your movement style um, that's going to determine what's going to work for you or not. If if you're wearing turf boots right now and you're not finding any issues with traction or slipping or you're at any kind of disadvantage because of not having that little bit of extra traction, then by all means, continue wearing it. I know for me personally, I am very much a pusher when it comes to how I run. Like okay. I am digging into the ground and I am pushing those studs into the surface. If I don't have that, I'm falling all over the place. Yeah. So it, it just depends on, on how you move. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with wearing turf boots if, if Absolutely you not. feel more comfortable wearing that. Absolutely not, no. And and you have a lot more studs underneath to, to grab the ball. I think it's, it's, it's fair play. Um, Jose Labra says, J Mike has no taste in colors. I guess the guy is colorblind. Well, I'm certainly blind, but you can't call a guy colorblind when I can clearly tell you that this boot is green. It was a joke. I know. Why aren't you laughing? <laughs> I just- Thank you. Was that a pity laugh? <laughs> it was a pity laugh. Wow. 
George I Beto, saw it coming. Uh, does the Puma Ultra have good durability? Because that is the only thing holding me back from getting them. Love the podcast. Thank you, George. Good durability. I think it has. I've, I've never encountered any problems with my, I mean, we, we talked about uh, initially about the, you know, the little uh, lace loops uh, that was an integrated part of the upper, them snapping. Obviously it's happened on a few occasions. I've seen some, but but, but the feedback uh, that, that, that we've had from like the, 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 the returns and warranty department at Unisport is that it's not, it's not like a big, big issue. There will always be some boots from any brand um, breaking, but uh, but I think that in terms of, uh, of of durability on the ultra, it's not it's not bad. Yeah, not bad. I've I've not seen any issues, and I think people need to understand that about products in general. If you're making thousands and thousands of these things, there's going to be a few pairs here and there that have issues. Yes. Like it's just it's inevitable. It yeah, can't all be a hundred percent perfect. So. You get a bad pair, I'm sure Puma backs up their product and they'll get you a replacement. But yeah, it, in general, that's yeah, it's not something I would worry too much about. No, and they're good boots, uh, great value for money. So I would just go and pull the trigger, to be honest. Uh, Jack's Betishy 2. How do you submit your Nike ID designs? Well, you can go and, uh, and uh, you know, it, go take a screenshot and um, and send it to the email. It's going to pop up on the screen right here. It is Josh. <laughs> footballbootnerds at gmail.com I want to say but I'm yes. not 100% sure I think you're right I think we, we never use it so we can't remember anyways uh, send it to that We full full transparency we have already made the video that we talked about but um, but you know we, we might, might make, make another one so just send it in send it in um, Stigur wow this is a crazy name Stigur Agdl Steinson it's a it's an Icelandic name, and I there's no chance I'm gonna pronounce that right. <laughs> Stigur, Astal Astal. Wow, Stigur. <laughs> My Icelandic colleague is gonna ruin me over this. Where's the best place to buy older boots? I would typically say um, eBay. Uh, that that's where I go and look, and you you will find resellers all over the place. Uh, BW Boots, uh, really really nice place. He has a lot of good stuff. Ben Warren. Nice guy as well. Uh, classic football shirts, they all also have uh, old boots, but I would usually go to eBay. Now try and see if you can find these, like uh, if I, I'm looking for Addy boots, I go to the German eBay, uh, get set, get Google Chrome to translate it for me. And um, if I didn't speak German, I do. But, but you know, go there, see if you can find some retailers that you, obscure retailers that just have boots left over for whatever reasons, because they don't know what they're, what they're sitting on. So yeah. I would go to eBay. That's where your best deal is going to be, certainly. Because yeah, I've definitely yeah. noticed, not that I've been looking that much lately, but that market has been inflated, let's say. Yeah. Where I, I think there's a lot of older stuff that's just way more money than it should be. But hey, if people are willing to pay it, then I suppose it's justified. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? I mean, if you really want a pair and, and you, you, you know, from, from the resellers and, and it's there and you want it, just pull the trigger. It's the easy way of doing it, at least. Yeah. We also have a question from Alejandro A. Best. Why does the video, one of the older videos, say um, Joshua Vujovic instead of Boot Nerds? Uh, is Jamie ripping the band? I almost had a heart attack and thought I wouldn't see Jacob this time around. And by Jacob, I think he actually means me. Oh, not you, Josh. And I think it's because um, you know YouTube required some some changes to to like channel information, and obviously this uh, being Josh's podcast, I think you typed in your 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 name information, and it also changed the channel name. So we've changed it back. Uh, don't worry, guys. I'm not going anywhere for the time being. We're not ripping the band um, unless Josh starts uh, like getting really angry at me claiming ACC <laughs> is, is a thing. When did that happen? That happened a couple of weeks back and I saw the comments. I was like, wait, well, what's happening? Am I getting kicked out of the Boot Nose podcast? And uh, yeah, I went in and changed the name. Well, did I? I must have did that on accident then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, whatever you saw, it was purely accidental. There was no <laughs> intention of breaking up the Boot Nerds podcast. <laughs> I saw a lot of comments on that. It was pretty funny. Um, last question here from skilled YouTuber. Ooh, tube, oh, wow, nice. In general, you guys seem to have similar opinions on most boots in terms most boots in terms of their performance, but have there been any boots that you guys simply don't agree upon? 
And I would say like historically, yeah, like the super, sorry, the vapor threes and fours, we like strongly disagree. Uh, I actually have good taste and I claim the vapor three <laughs> is definitely better than the vapor fours, uh, which is for some reason being heralded by Josh. Uh, also, you really like the, the laces, the laces yeah. twos and threes. And like, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. But I think modern boots, we, we usually come to some sort of agreement because I think we've also, we're also at the point of, of, of like our boot testing, reviewing careers that we've tried so many boots that even though we might not, uh, you know, our personal preference might not agree with, with the other guys, we, c- we can definitely see that from an objective point of view, this might, might appeal to, to some people. And usually, you know, if a boot is good or bad, we can usually tell. Uh, and, and I think it's just, I, I don't think it happens that much anymore, like that we completely disagree on something. Yeah, look, I think we disagree on older boots because I think our opinions are more based on personal preference and fond memories more yeah. so than objective sure. opinions. Sure. Where I think the way we review all the newer stuff is very objectively, 90% objective and yeah. 10% kind of personal preference True. and opinion. So <laughs> I would say currently the boot the boot we have probably disagreed the most on has been the future set and I'm really warming up to that as well. So yeah, look I I think it's it would be very suspicious if either of us had hugely different opinions on one pair of football mm, boots. Mm. I, I just I I feel like it's more kind of black and white in terms of how something is to be judged. Yes. Especially now because football boots, look, we've had this discussion before. Is there maybe a little bit less variety now than there was once upon a time? Probably. So Mm. I I just think that like something's either good or it's bad and you can have little opinions around what makes things good and what makes things bad. But in Mm. the general consensus on a product should be pretty similar across the board, not just amongst me and you, but against, when it comes to anybody reviewing products, it's always funny to me when there's this huge opinion that comes out from a consumer or whoever it may be, like reading product reviews on on the manufacturer website. Some of the opinions you read is, it's like, wow, what what boots were you wearing? Because yeah. we did not have the same experience. And, and, you know, to be fair, you know, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And if, if, if people feel that that's truly the case, then it's a genuine opinion and, and, and that's absolutely fair play. But I do also feel that, that sometimes I've seen, uh, and I'm not gonna name names, but I've seen you know, people on YouTube and, and, and Instagram you know, reviewing boots. And I feel like sometimes they're just forcing a, a, an agenda, an issue in order to be different. Right, um, and, and, and I get it. I, I definitely get it that you wanna have your own opinion and oh, I'm the guy who's not afraid to stand up to the, <laughs> And sure, I'm, I'm all for saying when things are good and when things are bad, but just, you know, amping up or, or amping up a problem just to stand out and finding problems just to be that guy who's, I just, you know, then, it also, then, then it's also a problem that if you just got paid by the brand to say nice things. And, you know, personally, me, when I started, you know, I've, I'm, I'm reviewing for Unisport and it's taken me some years to really get into like being completely transparent and honest uh, reviewing boots. I'll, I'll be honest, uh, that, that's been the case. And, and that has been a problem in terms of, of credibility in my early years, uh, reviewing boots in Danish and all that stuff. Um, and, but, but I would say it's the same thing credibility-wise if you just and bop all the negative things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, look, I think it's one thing to like talk strongly, either positively or negatively mm. when it comes to like a colorway or sure. a design or sure. something that, that's fine, whatever. Like if you, that's purely subjective, it doesn't really matter. But when it comes to like totally trashing what is legitimately a decent football boot or praising a football boot that's pretty subpar, mm. it, Again, it just, it raises red flags. I, I think high-end boots in general are pretty good across the board. And I just recently put out a brand new tier list video and everything for the most part was ranked pretty high. I had yeah, a few yeah. boots that I wasn't a big fan of and I ranked them lower. And I, I think a lot of the angry comments you see on the internet in general, when it comes to reviewing product 
it is down to somebody that hasn't tried a lot of football boots and they, they bought this one in particular that we happen to think is not that great. And obviously they have a very different opinion because not only do they own the product, but they also really like that product. Mm, but yeah. it's also, I, I think that's where our perspective is very different in that we've actually tried pretty much everything to come out in the last 10 years where the average consumer, they buy a brand new, whatever it may be that we don't think is all that great compared to what else is out there and they love it and that's fine. And, and so, so what Josh is basically saying that if, uh, if you disagree with Josh and my opinion, you're wrong. No, of you're course wrong. not. Uh, that, that's not what we're saying. And, 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 and again, if you have an opinion on it and, and I think it's, it's a valid opinion, it's your opinion, your feeling, your feelings are true, right? That's how you feel. Um, that that's so. That's not the way it should come across. But I think you're right in saying that. You know, sometimes um, it can feel like some reviewers are oversaturating their opinion just a little bit in order to to, to stand out. I, I, you know, I get the game. It's a it's a big game out there. YouTube, Instagram. Uh, you want to stand out, but yeah, it, it was it's a long discussion. But um, I, I think there's a f- with the experience we have, I think there's a reason that we agree uh, that we agree to some extent on on most boots because that is how it is. I'm not going to say our opinion is like the final truth, but that's exactly what I said. <laughs> I, no, but I think I think Jay, what you're trying to say is I think criticism that both of us share is always backed by some kind of valid reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's never, this is bad because I think it's bad. It's no. always, this is bad because of these specific reasons. And, 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 and least, I think the same thing when it's good. And, and, and that's, that's probably what I would be, uh, what I would say that when, when people review stuff, call that you say good things or bad things, but back them up because then, then that's when it becomes useful to people when they hear, okay, it's bad because this and this and that, then they can say, okay, but these things are not important to me. I don't really care about this, this, and that. So I'll go ahead and buy the product anyway because of the good things that are X, Y, Z. That is when it, it actually becomes useful to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I think everything has to be fair. You have to be fair in mm-hmm. your criticism mm-hmm. of, of reviewing anything. Yeah. Because it's really easy to just like, oh, I got this and it gave me blisters and I'm mad mm-hmm. and it's the worst football boot ever because it gave me blisters. Sure, well, sure. any football boot could give you blisters. Right. You have to really dissect why you got blisters, mm. how much of that was on the boots, how much of that was on the socks you were wearing, how much of that was on your foot type. Did you have the right size? Like there's variables to all of this. So it, it, it's just, again, you have to be fair and I think you have to have valid reasoning for any criticism, good or bad, that you have about a product. Yes. So again, if you disagree with our opinion, you're pretty. Right. <laughs> that is, I, I'm, I actually mean the exact opposite of that. But I think we have established that now. I'm not going to try and uh, and make another joke on that because clearly I'm not. It's not hitting home. Yeah, and um, just and just for the just to end out this topic, me and you do not talk ever before putting out reviews on any new product. I don't think we've ever done that. No, I don't think we have. I, I mean, think we've talked so, after. Yeah. But I think both of us have kind of like had this almost unwritten agreement where it's like, I don't want you to taint my opinion and exactly. I don't want myself to taint yours. I yeah, want I us to both have opinions and they kind of just end up being relatively similar in the end. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually had conversations where we when we've both tried product and, and is like, I'm surprised at how much, you know, you know, up until that point, I'm the only one who's who's like had these thoughts, and I've discussed uh, my experience with the boots. With I've, on, I've only had me right, and then I talk to you, and you say, "Oh, I agree with these 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 things," and I'm like, "How how did you know? It's all in here." So so that's that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, but I don't think we've done that. No, no, uh, we probably shouldn't. We should we should stay away from that in order to keep uh, in order to stay like. Uh, we don't affect each other too much. We don't taint each other. Anyways, that guys, that's, that's a lot of talking. Uh, we could probably go on forever, but we're not going to bother you with any more. That was episode 106 of the Boonos podcast. Now, if you have any questions to spark a discussion like this or the superhero discussion, whatever, which kind of hot drinks we like, let us know in the comment section right <laughs> down below. Go us in there. Um, and also, of course, if you have any Nike ID designs you'd like us to look at and rate in a later episode, footballbootnerds at gmail.com. Now, of course, you can go and buy the... 
uh, CR7 Silver Safari boots. I almost called these Silver Surfer. Uh, now we're talking superheroes and the Adidas X-Men boots, onionsportstore.com, link in the description. And with those words, remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and you can check out our videos on the bubbles over there. I've been Jay Mike and I approve this message. Cheerio. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao, signing off. Bella, bella.